Folks, before we get started, let's just chit chat for a second. See, if any of you saw my last Invincible review, then you probably heard me say that a storm came through and fried my PC. Like, I got it back running, but like, I'm not, I, it wasn't a joke. Literally everything's gone. Like, everything I had is just gone. All the videos I was working on, all my audio recordings, all my podcast files, I just, all my podcast setups, like with OBS and everything, all my apps, my fucking Henry Stickman collection save file, my everything. Like, I was currently working on a 30 minute review of all three Broly movies in honor of Akira Toriyama's passing, and it's just all gone. And to be honest, it kind of took all the steam out of me. Like, I just, uh, I don't know. All my motivation just was gone. I just, I low key thought about just sort of giving up. Like, I don't know how to, some of this stuff, there is no getting it back. I just, there is no even, there is no redoing it. That's not how like live recording works. It just, but if Akira Toriyama taught me anything, it's that you don't just give up. So I decided to just turn back the clock and go back to my roots. I, I might have bitten off more than I could chew with all the bringing my friends on and all the things we were doing, working on all these backed up files. So I'm just gonna make keep it simple. That when case this happens again, it will be much easier. So today, let's talk about the Green Lantern animated series. Our rings just translate other languages. They can't make them rhyme. Or make them less irritating. Who's, Who's irritating? irritating? Anyone wearing green, apparently. Green Lantern, TAS, is an action-adventure, science fiction, animated drama series that aired on Cartoon Network as part of their DC Nation block from around March 2012 to exactly one year 2013, so like, only one season. This series was developed by Bruce Timm, who you will know from Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, and the Justice League cartoon. Like, if you know DC, you know these things. And it was directed by Sam Liu, and you know, I had started writing down the list of the project he's worked on, but we will be here all fucking day. Look, there's his IMDb page. Uh, fuck. There's his IMDb page. I put it on the screen. Look at all those works. This series follows the depressing space adventures of Hal Jordan, Kilowog, voice on my goat, Aya, and most of the time Razor when he's not being a fucking priss. Kilowog, is that formal wear or just sent me through together? Well, Turkey Hanaseka? He said he likes your outfit. <laughs> you don't suffer of Madagaki. What? He likes yours, too. All in all, as far as first impressions, the show's not bad. See, I went in wanting to hate it because I'm a stinker and my mother didn't love me as a child. <laughs> but I believe the strength of this series is the character interactions and the world surrounding the Green Lanterns. And, like, speaking of the Lanterns, learning, like, how every Lantern Corps functions and the different rules and how they coexist with one another was a really big plus for me. Like, for example, Green Lanterns get super juiced in the mere presence of Blue Lanterns, while Red Lanterns are powerless when they're around. Unless you're Razor, who somehow has more rage than the known laws of the universe can contain. No! Another big highlight of this for me is all the creative ways the Lanterns use their constructs. From like simple bats and baseballs and hammers, to more complicated buzz saws and fire extinguishers, to a one-man homing missile armada and a fully functional giant-sized rifle capable of aiming and firing a bullet with a live person inside. The construct would have to be an exact copy of the ultra-warp coil mechanism. Can either of you do that? I make hammers. So that was a fucking lie. I think one of the things as far as like what I didn't like, like what makes the show fall apart for me is like making up the rules as they go. If I make any sense here, like early in the series, Hal's ring is low. So he finds just enough juice for an AI driven long range construct enough to fool Razor's dumbass. And then a different episode, he somehow finds enough juice left on E to rip and hold open a hole big enough to fit an entire planet through. We'll talk about it later before it goes dead and he falls out of the sky. Okay, I guess. And then towards the end, Kilowog and Razor, and uh, he, Kilowog and Razor, fall clean out of the sky and say, ah, not enough left, juice left to fly. Excuse me? That pink gorilla kept an entire cargo ship from getting uh, sucked into a black hole using giant rockets while running on E. But now all of a sudden, you don't have enough juice to fly? Like, uh, just make it make sense. And while that is annoying, I'll be honest, that's one of my more, like, nitpicky complaints. Like, I think I'm probably the only one that has a problem with that. Like, the real reason some people might be turned away from this show would be the animation. Even the best 3D animated show you can think of will never hold a candle to good old-fashioned drawings. I think the closest we will ever get is probably Ken Gon Azura. But like in Green Lantern, the ugly-ass models, the repetitive, boring-ass backgrounds, the uncanny ship-in-a-bottle feel of every episode will be enough to turn any- even a kid would be turned away from that. 
Like deadass, every other planet looks the goddamn same. Any civilians on that planet, they all look the goddamn same. The field in episode one that Hal crashes his jet into for some strange reason, no different than the planet where their rings run out of power. Oa, the same five buildings on Reapy that you see on the Red Lantern's home base. Like the race of Yellowstone miners, whose names I've already forgotten, same two people on repeat. It really takes you out of it for a while. And like, and especially in a show that's set in space where it's supposed to be like such a variety of characters. Like when you take other things like, for, like I don't know, fucking, like Samurai Jack is grounded in Earth, but it's a dystopian, very far away future. And that gives them the same leeway that you would have in space. Like with all the different biomes and different creatures and different mechanics. But in this, it's just the same shit over and over. You know, now that I'm talking out loud. You know, I may just not be a fan of space set television. Nah, that can't be right. It's not, the problem's not me. I love Star Wars, like Mandalorian and Ahsoka. I loved regular show in space. And if you know me, you'll know I will low tier God myself eventually if I don't get that fucking Galactic Kids Next Door series. Yeah, I'm not the problem, it's just this tune. Yeah, yeah, I've decided. All in all though, it is a shame that Cartoon Network pulled the plug on this show before it could really get ramped up. Like, like they say it's because of poor toy sales, which will hinder some good shit. It will hinder a good cartoon, poor toy sales. But y'all wanna know the real reason this got canceled? The Green Lantern movie came out during production of season two. The Green Lantern movie came out, crashed, and has been burning for about a decade now. Like, for real, think about that. This movie did so fucking poorly that the execs just gave the fuck up on Green Lantern as a unit. You're welcome, Like, Canada. as a character said, nope, the kids don't want the lantern. Man said, I ignored my destiny once, child. I can't do it again. I know what I must do. And just greenlit a hundred Batman properties. Like, not that I don't like Batman, it's just... Fuck, man, y'all don't even give it a real chance. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, the last note I have is from episode 16, titled Steam Lantern. Don't worry, I'm not gonna rehash the whole plot here, but while this was low-key becoming one of my favorite episodes while I was watching it, it ends with Hal Jordan dragging an entire separate Earth composed entirely of 17th century London back to our universe because theirs was low-key dead. I'm gonna repeat that because I don't think y'all heard me. There is now an entire separate planet out there entirely of old-timey English people. Can you forgive me in the short bit we have left? Of course. Time for one last tea then. Quiet. Whoa, whoa. There's no time for tea now. I'd rather live in a fucking, but uh, I, fuck, I don't know, fucking d d d d Dimension X from 2012 TMNT. I'd rather live there than in a verse with that nonsense. Just knowing they're out there, man. They keep me up at night. They drive me crazy. All right, all right. All jokes aside, time for a final verdict. Greenlander the Animated Series is a sometimes ugly, painfully repetitive, doesn't even follow its own universal rules mess. But it's the world building, creative power system, character interactions, and the all around like homey feeling of seeing how Hal Jordan saves a day again and again will have you just as disappointed as I am that the plug got pulled. Oh that, yeah, real inspirational. Deeply moving. Now let's get off this rock and find Aya. Did you understand what he was? Not a word. I would absolutely love for another season. I would adore another season. It's not going to happen, but I would absolutely kill for that. And I mean, before any of you say it, yeah, I guess we did get Razor and Young Justice. But fun fact, people, I fucking hate Young Justice. But I don't count it. I don't like it. All right. Thank you guys for watching. This was fun. This was fun to go back to my roots and not have to filter through my friends being dumbasses for 40 minutes trying to get a decent video out of it. I am, I will always be disappointed about everything that I lost, but at the very end of the day, like you can't be like scared to, you know, start back from zero. I built this all, I built it all up. It got knocked down. Now I'm back, uh, back to the past Samurai Jack. Why'd I say that? All right. Thank y'all. And uh, King of the Dead signing off. See y'all next time.